Chances are you may keep around $50 at home for an occasional pizza delivery, for example. Now, Malaysian investigators say they have found nearly $29 million at apartments belonging to former Prime Minister Najib Razak. It's part of a probe that links Najib and his close associates to a multi-billion dollar scandal at the state investment fund 1MDB. Najib insists he's done nothing wrong. The government of new Prime Minister Mahathir Mohamed, who won a shock election victory on May the 9th, says it'll repay everything 1MDB owes. Claire Rucastle brown is the editor and founder of Sarawak Report. It's an investigat investigative website focused on Malaysia and was among the first news outlets to highlight the massive amounts of money that went missing from One Malaysia Development Berhad. And she joins us now from London. Claire, it's great to have you on the show. Um, tell us what your connection is to Malaysia and how you came about the 1MDB story in the first place. Well, I was born in East Malaysia, um, the um, former British colony of Sarawak, the, the state of Sarawak, um, and um, therefore had quite a sort of affection for the place and, and kept a watching eye over an increasingly depressing um, situation. Um, Malaysia has been subject to massive kleptocracy for decades, and, and it was these re resource-rich areas, um, underdeveloped and, and with small populations, that were getting worst hit. Um, the Borneo rainforest was, was literally taken out um, of, of Sarawak um, in the course of about a, a decade and a half. Um, and um, I started looking at that as a journalist, trying to bring it to wider opinion, and, uh, and discovered, of course, that the root cause of this was um, was corruption. Um, the uh, decisions being made um, were being made for the personal enrichment of a handful of people, as opposed to the general mm. good. Uh, so, how did One MDB come about then? Well, um, I first started looking at um, corruption in those states of Sabah and Sarawak in East Malaysia, um, found that despite um, the fact that we've, I've done a lot of work on that and, and brought a lot of, um, in fact, the, the Malaysian Anti-Corruption Commission um, came in after some of the articles that I wrote and, and, and performed comprehensive reports on both those states. Nothing was being done. Um, and that was obviously because of the, the, the culture of corruption went right up to the top. And I started looking at that situation and, and discovered that the prime minister himself had a number of um, criticisms open about him, including this one MDB fund, mm -hmm. which was uh, widely suspected of being a slush fund. And right. to, to cut a very strong investigative story short, I, I got a whistleblower with a lot of data that enabled me to bust open um, what was going on with 1MDB. Right. Claire, do you think that uh, the government of Mahathir Mohamed is going about this investigation the right way? Yes, I think so. I mean, um, it, it's been a sort of sea change of, of Malaysian politics. I mean, there was endemic corruption, but but what Najib and his very profligate wife, Rosma, as, as you can deduce from these vast sums of money that were found in their house, they, they'd taken the whole thing onto a very new and shocking level for Malaysians. And, and, and I and others were, were bringing that out. And, and the 1MDB scandal showed how Rosma had been using this stolen money to buy herself hundreds of millions of dollars worth of diamonds. And there were yachts, um, super yachts were being bought, and the Wolf of Wall Street finance, massive, massive expenditure of billions of dollars. It's the biggest global kleptocracy um, investigation being conducted by the United States and elsewhere at the moment. Um, now, Mahathir and several of his right. old political enemies were really brought together by that right. on an anti platform. OK, I'm afraid we are out of time. I, I wish we could go into this in more detail. Claire Rucastle-Brown, Sarawak Report. Thank you very much indeed.